All right, guys, let's do a quick review of the latest G-Shock. This is the GA2100 that I recently picked up off of eBay for about 125 US dollars. Uh, currently, right now, though, they're going for about 170 or 180, which is pretty high since the suggested retail price is 99 US dollars. Uh, this one has an octagon bezel, uh, very similar to the very first G-Shock, the DW5000. Uh, except instead of a rectangular case, you've got this more circular case. So it's uh, quite a nice design. It's very light. Uh, it's jokingly referred to as the uh, plastic royal oak. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the royal oak, it's a uh, it's an Audemars Piguet, a very high end watch. I'll throw up a picture of it right here. So uh, you purchase this watch and you're saving about uh, I don't know anywhere from twenty five to sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> Uh, so, but uh, this is a very lightweight watch. It has the new uh, carbon core guard. Uh, typically, G-Shocks they have um, they have a large inner bumper, which is used for protecting the module. Uh, that bumper has been redone. It's now resin and carbon core. If you look closely, you can kind of see how there's a color difference between the uh, outer case. Uh, and the inner bumper there. So that's the resin carbon composite. As you can see on the uh, stainless steel screwed on case back here, it says carbon core guard. This is the 5611 module, which we'll go over in a minute. And as you can also see, we've got some quick release straps here. So Casio might be uh, um, bringing out some adjustable swappable bands in the near future. Um, anyway, this is the thinnest G-Shock available right now. It comes in at 11.8 uh, millimeters, which is very thin. I've got uh, 5610 here uh, in comparison. So the, the 2100 is 45 millimeters in diameter, uh, slightly bigger than the 5610. 5610 is about, I think it's 12.8 millimeters thick, so slightly thicker than the 2100, uh, but nonetheless you can kind of see how, how each watch has that octagon bezel there, which is pretty handsome. Uh, the watch is about 51 grams, which is very lightweight. It actually feels pretty small on the wrist. Um, and uh, let's, take a, let's take a quick look at this watch. Alright, so uh, like I mentioned, this watch has the 5611 module. And uh, first, let's check out the, uh, the backlight here. So if you press the light button, so you've got a, um, you've got a light behind the uh, LCD screen uh, in the bottom right. And you also have an LED in the bottom right, which illuminates the entire watch face. Uh, so double LED, it's got a five-year battery, 200 meter water resistance, uh, it's got world time, a stopwatch, which uh, which can go at uh, one one hundredth of a second if you're under an hour. Anything over an hour, it clocks in at one second intervals. It's got five alarms, an hourly chime, auto calendar, 12 hour, 24 hour, uh, three year battery life. It actually takes two, two batteries and uh, it's accurate to about 15 seconds per month. And this is the black and gray model, which has uh, neobrite luminescence on the uh, hour and minute hands. Unfortunately, there's no neobrite on the indices, uh, but uh, it works pretty well. The, the blacked out version, which is the version, I think it's 1A1JF, that one has no neobrite. Um, and I believe the red one, which is the model 4AJF, has neobrite. All right, let's quickly review some of the features of this watch. Um, again, this is an analog digital. You've got the digital display in the bottom right, which is a little tough to read. It's a reverse display. Um, in sunlight, it's perfect. Indoors, it is a little tough to read. It's actually very small as well. Uh, with this module, if you press the B and C buttons at the same time, you can actually move the hands out of the way. Over on the left-hand side, you've got an analog day indicator. Um, and some of the text on the dial, you've got a two, uh, 20 bar water resistance, uh, G-Shock Casio at the very bottom, you have the mute, alarm, and signal. 
Uh, and over on the right, you have the daylight savings time and hands indicator. Uh, so the hands move out of the way so you can see the entire dial. Um, I have the light set up right now for uh, three seconds. And it's got a really nice fade out, similar to the brand new uh, G-Shocks that have come out recently too. Uh, really nice fade out on both the LED uh, and the Super Illuminator. Uh, so uh, right now we are in uh, time mode. If you press the, the uh, bottom button, I'm sorry, we're in date mode. If you press the bottom button, that switches over to time mode uh, with seconds uh, below that. All right, let's check out the first mode. So I'm going to go into world time. Uh, one of the things I do not like about this world time mode is that it lists out both the uh, airport code, MEX, and the full city name. So this one's Mexico City. So you can take a good five seconds or so to actually get the time to appear on the screen while you're waiting for the city to scroll across. So, um, But nonetheless, um, it works well and you've got the seconds down below. Press it again and you're into uh, <clears throat> uh, stopwatch mode. And again, it counts um, one hundredths of a second for the first hour. And then after every hour after that, it just counts a single seconds. So you can stop that. You've also got a lap and a reset. Press it once again and we're into the timer mode. So this is currently set for a three, three minute timer. So it'll count down for you there. Stop, start and reset of course. And then we've got uh, alarm, five alarms and signal. So we've got alarm one, alarm two, alarm three, alarm four. Alarm 5 and signal, which you can turn on or off by pressing the adjust button. Pretty handy. And then we're back to the time mode. And again, you can switch between time and date using the bottom right button. So all in all, it's got uh, pretty much every feature you can expect from, uh, from the G-Shock lineup. Uh, again, it's got the analog uh, day display over on the left and uh, in order to set it of course you hold down the adjust button until the flash is set and then you can go through um, and set the various features again it's a little tough to see here but uh, you've got 12 or 24 hour mode hours minutes seconds year, month, date, tones on or off. Uh, for the light, you can get uh, anywhere from one second to three seconds. And here we are back at Eastern time. Sorry, I accidentally set it for a different time zone. So here we are back uh, at about 10.04 Eastern time. And uh, this watch, the uh, minute hand moves every 20 seconds as opposed to some other uh, Casio watches I've seen which uh, where the minute hand moves every 10 seconds. So when we come up to 30, you can see that it, it'll slightly, I'm uh, sorry, 40, it'll slightly move when we get to 40. Try to get up close for you there. There you go. So every 20 seconds the uh, minute hand moves slightly. Uh, all in all, a really nice watch. Uh, I have a six and a half, six point seven five inch wrist. Let's give this a look. Um, maybe maybe a millimeter or two uh, too large for my wrist, but nonetheless, like I said, it wears wears pretty small, so it actually looks you know pretty decent on a, a 6.75 inch wrist. Definitely not as big as some of the other G-Shocks. Um, I actually like the fit a lot. Doesn't overlap my wrist too much, and uh, it's got a metal clasp resin band which again is swappable using a quick release function uh, so all in all I think this is a, a really nice watch again it goes for well the retail price is 99 I've seen it on eBay recently for about 170 I picked this up for 125 a, a couple weeks ago uh, but definitely check it out um, highly recommended and uh, check out the links in the description uh, to see what the current price is alright guys have a great day we'll talk to you soon